Pledge allegiance. See, Kev? Yeah. Kevin. Okay. Hold up. Well set. Yeah. Good evening and welcome to the Town of Wareham Board of Selectmen meeting of October 10th, 2017. We actually opened the meeting at 6.06 .06 p.m. and went into executive session for reason number three under the open meeting law uh, to discuss uh, potential litigation. Uh, can we have another roll call, please, just for the public record? President Selectman Tattlebaum, Selectman Slavin, Selectman Whiteside, Selectman Scaziotti, Selectman Tropiano, Town Administrator Derek Sullivan, Town Council Rich Bowen is out of the building right now, but back shortly. Okay. Uh, let's see. Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Chief Walsh, would you lead us, please? Thank you. Uh, <coughs> announcements. Secretary Torpiano? Uh, no, I'll, no, no, I'll pass. Okay. Nope. Secretary okay. Scaziotti, Selectman Whiteside? Oh, yes. Always. <laughs> um, you're going to talk about pink patches. So I'm not going to talk about pink patches. However, we all have one. Hold it up. Okay. Sorry. Um, also, the Wareham Police Department is teaming up with police departments across the Plymouth County to take part in a month-long toiletry drive in October to recognize Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Toiletry items sought include toothbrushes, toothpaste, mouthwash, floss, shampoo and conditioner, combs and brushes, deodorant, disposable razors, feminine hygiene products, diapers, soap, lotion, and lip balm. These will be donated to local agencies that provide services for survivors and family members affected by domestic violence. A collection box is at the Wareham Police Department and at the Wareham District Court throughout October. Wareham Core Picket Fundraiser. CORE announces that it now has gift certificates available on its website, wherehamcore.org. The certificates may be downloaded for anyone wishing to buy fence pickets that can be engraved for the Lopes Playground rebuild as a gift for any occasion or for the holidays. Wareham CORE is selling the pickets for $40 each, and they can be engraved with your name, your children, ch child children's name, grandchildren, friend, family member, loved one, etc. When the rebuild is finished in fall of 2018, the playground will be surrounded by a picket fence of 500 pickets, or probably more, each one created out of 42 recycled milk jugs. The color of the plastic wood is cedar, and the wording is dark green. Wareham Core Spaghetti Supper. On November 18th at 6 p.m., there will be a spaghetti supper at the Redmond Hall, 758 Main Street. Tickets are $20 and can be purchased at the OBA office, the gallery consignment shop, and by contacting Lopes Playground at gmail.com, beginning October 19th. Don't Trash Wareham uh, completed its fall coast sweep. Volunteers clear, cleaned up Little Harbor, Onset and Shell Point beaches, and Swift and Swift's Neck beaches. Overall, there were a total of 73, vol 73 people volunteering. I have bleh, bleh, a mouth today. 73 people volunteering. Don't Trash Wareham would like to thank those volunteers for their support and hard work, picking up a total of over 160 pounds of trash and debris. There were also people who went out on days not scheduled for that, and, and DTW would like to also recognize them. There was an increase in cigarette butts at Onset and Little Harbor Beaches with a slight decrease at Swift's. Cigarette smoking is banned by the Board of Health on all town beaches, parks, and playgrounds. The second most frequent items picked up were food and candy wrappers, cups, containers, etc. Small pieces of plastic, which easily wash into the ocean, were also abundant. Notable. Since there is a bottle deposit on most bottles and cans brought to the beach, we find few of them overall. 
It should also be noted that most bottles and cans we do find are liquor and beer bottles and beer cans, not allowed on the public beaches. We are still awaiting the result of the nip bottle deposit bill as we did find several nips, as always. Library. The Friends of the Wareham Free Library are participating in Dolly Parton's Imagination Library and are seeking donations. For $25, you can sponsor one child to have one hardcover book mailed <coughs> to the child's home every month for a year. Children must be residents of Wareham and must be in the age from birth to their fifth birthday. Please support one or more children. Donation forms are available at the library or send your checks to the Friends of the Wareham Free Library, Post Office Box 735 Wareham. Program supports early childhood literacy and helps our children become reading ready for kindergarten. Registration for qualified children to participate in the Imagination Library will begin at the main library on Saturday, November 4th from 10 to 2. The special kickoff event will feature the Pitter Patter Puppets who will perform <laughs> Pitter Patter Puppets perform um, at 1130. Registration forms will also be available at the Main and Spinney Branch libraries. The October book sale dates Tuesday, October 24th, 5 to 6.45, Wednesday, October 25th, 10 a.m. to 3.45, Thursday, October 26th, 10 a.m. to 6.45, Saturday, October 28th, 10 to noon, and there are no book sales in November. All proceeds of the book sales are used to purchase books and materials for the library. B Week celebration. October 14th from 10 a.m. To, to noon at the main library. The story of My Bees begins at 10 and includes puppets, dancing, and music. And Peter will be wearing a bee uniform. At 11 a.m., Tales from the Hive, a morning of beekeeping with pho photography and beekeeper Renee Ricciardi. It's also a raffle to benefit the library with gift certificates from Nesrella's, Mazzilli's, Olson's, Bailey's, Onset Bay Association, <coughs> East Wind Seafood, and Lindsay's. Tickets are on sale now at the library and prizes will be drawn at the event. And the, Perlo the Erloined Letter. Sponsored by the Wareham Library Foundation, this play is a film noir spoof starring <laughs> Peter Teitelbaum, who has yet to see the script. But he's going to be Nick Bullet, ace detective. Right. Mary Bruce is the nightclub singer troublemaker. The play takes place on Friday, October 20th at the Redmond Hall. Appetizers, desserts, and a cash bar begin at 7, and the play begins at 7.30. Other notable performers include Gary Buckminster, yeah, Jackson Gilman, Queen Banda, Nicole Calvin, and Michael Carlosi and Marsha Hickey. All proceeds support the library. Tickets are $25 and may be purchased at the library, Spinney Branch, Gallery Consignment Shop, or for any of the from any of the victims of the play. Grumpy's 5K. Cranberry Harvest Race returns for its annual walk-run family event on November 4th at 9 a.m. The race honors Robert Grumpy Conway, a longtime AD Makepeace Company employee and nature photographer who died in 2010. Don't talk while I am. Proceeds will benefit, benefit the Cranberry Educational Foundation Scholarship Fund. The unique run walk winds along a nature lover's trail through cranberry bogs of the AD Makepeace Company during harvest time. The race will take place in Tyhonet Village, 150 Tyhonet Road, Wareham. Register online at http colon backslash backslash www.grumpy5k.racewire.com or at the advanced registration number pickup on Friday, November 3rd or on the day of the race at Box Mill on site. Each registrant will receive a t-shirt and be able to partake of a cranberry feast following the event catered by Harriet's of Marion. Unique cranberry-focused awards will be presented to winners at all ca age categories, both male and female. Um, Grumpy's incredible nature-inspired photography will be on display during the post-race festivities. Wareham students are eligible to apply for the foundation's scholarship. And finally, um, 
Readers Become Leaders starts on Sunday, October 15th at noon to 2 p.m. Students walk down from Minot Far School, down Minot Avenue to Great Neck, turn right at the cemetery at Stillman Drive and back onto Minot and it ends at the school. Um, at each one of several stops, somebody reads part of a book to the kids. Um, there will be several people out picking up trash on the route between now and then. So those of you who throw trash out, please stop at least for the next few days so that we don't have to double pick it up. That's it. Don't get me going. So you have some. Yep. Okay, we're in Historical Society. They have a program with Donna Turin. It's October 16th, 4 p.m. at the Methodist Meeting House. Donna will talk about life in Warham Haunted Village from 1872 to 1927 on her family's, family's little farm on land surrounding Harlow Brook. Join us for a warm and wonderful journey back in time to the turn of the last century as Donna tells wonderful stories about her grandmother, Mabel Bessie Jones, and life before the internet, cell phones, and superhighways. Mrs. Turin will share memorabilia, pictures, gingerbread, made with her grandmother's recipe. Refreshments will be served after the program. Admission for members are free, non-members $2. Uh, we have another, I'm not gonna say a website, but basically we have a Wareham Matters. We have another Wareham group that Nora Bickey's just recently done, which lists all the different events in Wareham, which we've never really had that piece before. Almost everything that Judy read off is on that. So I would suggest very strongly that people are looking for what's going on in Wareham to go to that particular Facebook page, and it gives you probably 15 to 20 items going at least a month out. Mm -hmm. and it makes it a lot easier to find out what's going on and when. So you're telling me you don't want me reading anymore? No, you can read all you want to. You can't right. hear. You can't hear him. Can you hear him out there? No. You gotta get so close to the microphone. You're working. Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, we got a dud. Hello, hello. Nothing? Oh. Oh. Can I have to, do you want to do you want me yell the stuff out? No, that's okay. I don't think they, I don't think they will. They say they're on. Okay. Um, also, uh, Make Peace had their big event this past weekend, uh, the Cranberry Festival. Uh, Saturday uh, was probably the biggest time I've ever seen there. Uh, they were saying there was at least 15,000 people there. I think there was more. The traffic was unbelievably difficult. I'm sure our police chief had a wonderful time with all the traffic backing up everywhere. Uh, it was really good to see the governor came, which was a kind of a surprise. It didn't make for a mess either. And um, there were a lot of people from a lot of places, including out of this country, mm -hmm. that came and really enjoyed just getting out the cranberry bogs and making a mess like the TV commercial that you see all the time. So uh, Sunday was a little more difficult, but again, it's great to see Wareham has what's considered one of the top 100 events in the country now. So you have to give AD Makepeace credit for what they've done with that particular piece. Um, I think that's going to be what I got there. Wareham Village Association. Uh, Wareham Village Association has a scarecrow contest October 15th to November 1st. Judging will be the weekend of the 28th and 29th of October. Oktoberfest train, Saturday 1021, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Trick or treat is gonna be Tuesday 1031 at 3 p.m. Uh, Christmas parade, Saturday, I believe that's the 2nd of December at 3 p.m. Uh, for any information, get a hold of the Wareham Village Association to get details on that. Also, these events will also be up on that new website, as I mentioned before. All right, get that. Yeah, that takes care of that piece there. Yeah, I think so. Uh, just for everybody's information, the parade will have a different route this year. It's going to start up here at Town Hall and go down uh, Marion Road, down Chapel Hill, and then take a right onto Main Street. Instead of starting up at uh, Center Park, it's going to come, be coming this way. So it'll be a little bit easier route for everybody to get it'll, it'll help with the traffic. And actually, we noticed last year that there weren't so many people from uh, CVS North. so. 
Uh, we're hopeful that uh, people will come, come up the hill and, and see the start of it as well. Uh, there's one more event, uh, Cranberry Coast Concerts presents the Halloween Spooktacular. That's at Eastern Bank, uh, 226 Main Street in Wareham Center. Uh, it's going to be from 6 to 10, October 28th. And there will be tapas from El Mariachi, a cash bar, uh, and there will be a large all-star musical lineup. And tickets are uh, $30 per person or 50 per couple and are available at the Gallery Consignment Shop and Music of the Bay. And you can also go on Facebook and just find Cranberry Coast Concerts and figure out where the online purchase uh, outlet is as well. And that's all I have. We got one more? I have one that wasn't really given to us. The Onset Four Square Church is doing a trunk or treat. And for those who don't understand, people basically load their trunk up with candy and stuff. Sit there, kids come by and you basically fill up their bags as they go. This will be on the 31st at Lopes Field in Onset. Just so you know, they, yep. haven't, they haven't sent us an announcement, but that's a fun time for everybody. Yep. That's okay, it. that wraps up the announcements. Uh, citizens' comments, is there anybody who'd like to speak to the board tonight? Do we know why we have a lot of library trustees here tonight? Oh, you're, you've recruited people? Because we actually don't have any uh, appointments on the agenda tonight, interestingly. That's typically, well, that, that's pretty much correct. That's the order we set the agendas up in on a weekly basis, but yet we see nothing before us. But if you'd like to come up and talk to us while you're here, we can certainly take up the matter of the appointment next week. Do you want to do Kevin do first? Back, what? Do you want to do Kevin first? Well, let them do this and then we'll do Kevin. Right. Till the 10th, didn't make it. Yep, you got it. Okay, yeah, the agenda's kind of weird. Uh, well, why don't uh, come on up and tell us who you are and why you're interested in serving. Apologies. And we'll be, sh we apologize uh, that the actual appointing won't take place tonight, but. But we don't need to come back next week. No, no, okay. no. We'll remember what you said. Yes, Make it memorable. I'm Dan Bonner. I live at 98 Edgewater Drive in Wareham, and I am, um, very interested in libraries. I think they are a center of opportunity in any community. Uh, and I think uh, when I first moved here, uh, I moved here a week before they shut the library down uh, uh, for a good part. I didn't have any uh, internet access because our house was just being built. Uh, and I had to go to the library to use it. And, I literally would be lit uh, limited to a half an hour because there would be people standing in line behind me waiting to use the computers. People do job search, people do research, people do, a, a, libraries are used for all kinds of things, but I think that libraries can be a uh, center in a community for vitality, for growth, for a sense of community, uh, for a sense of, um, a really vital place to live. And I'm hoping to be part of helping the library come back to being a vital center for this community. Okay, thank you. I'm Linda Jackson and I live across the street at 14 Morris Avenue. Yeah. And I moved to Wareham uh, 15 years ago. I lived 12 years enjoying the library very much. I, I noticed young people were there all the time. I attended, uh, <coughs> young people were teaching us older people how to use the computers. I, I could use any library in the area. I love libraries. And then four years ago, I moved to Morse Avenue and uh, from where I had lived earlier in Wareham. And I've just seen a terrific difference since then. I don't see the young people over there anymore. I I can't get the books that I would like. Um, I understand that there are no libraries in the schools, so where do these kids go if they need uh, 
library books. I know everybody has computers now, but not everybody has computers. And I <coughs> like books, and I hope that there's still some people on this planet that I'm like books. Thank you. And librarians. <laughs> They're even better than books. Okay, then. Well, well, thank you very much. We'll take care of the actual appointing next week, uh, but I would like the record to reflect that. Ask a Excuse me? Questions? Yeah, go ahead. May I? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Ms. Bonner, can you give us a little bit of background about yourself? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, because the application that you filled out would have asked for a page of, you know, tell us why you want to be. And I board. did fill it out, so. You didn't? We don't have anything. I filled one out too. We don't have it in front of us. That's the whole problem. Okay. Thank you. I, I'm a relatively new re resident. Moved to Wareham three years ago. My occupation is an academic. I uh, teach social policy for people who are getting master's degrees from Boston University. Uh, and I have access to their university, but it pains me that we don't have a library here that we can use and that my neighbors and their children and friends can use. Thank you. And may I ask the same question of you, Ms. Jackson? The, the question was <coughs> in that extra page of stuff that, you know, why would you want to be? I think I said to you what I wanted to say there. Okay. And your background is in? My background is I I'm a curious individual. I was married for 35 years and lived in the Soviet Union, lived in uh, Germany, lived in England, traveled all over the world. I, I love knowledge and uh, I just, I, I feel that books are part of that experience. If you don't have the luck that I had to actually live in these countries, you can read about them. It's, it's just fabulous. Thank you. May I ask one further question? Yeah. How many vacancies are there on the trustees? Uh, just the two, these two of them. Thank you. And I would like to make a comment. Every child in Wareham High School has the opportunity and a portal for the Boston Public Library. Oh, All, every single child in the building, and they have had for several years. So they do have the ability to go online with one of the greatest libraries in the country, if not the world. Okay, any other questions from the board? Online. Yeah. You said. Yes. That goes back to, to the audience. I understand that, yeah. but, but they, to say that they don't have the opportunity to go online. Physical, no, I, we didn't say that. Well, we're not, we're, but I'm not, yeah. yeah. Let's I, so I just wanted to make that on that. Um, annotation. Um, any other questions for these? No. Thank you for stepping up. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and I, I would like the record to reflect that no fewer than three of the current trustees showed up, obviously, in support of these two candidates. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> okay, now we are going to, let's see. We'll go to Kevin first for the Pink <coughs> Patch presentation. Please. Good evening, Chief. It's not really a presentation. I just wanted to tell you uh, real quick about the Pink Patch project. Uh, since October 1st, people in town may have noticed some officers wearing the pink patches like on, on, on my shirt now, or, uh, or the fact that other people in the, in the public have a patch. It's a, um, it's a project that was brought forth to me as an idea by Officer Carl Baptiste, who uh, told me about the Pink Patch project, which is a nationwide initiative to bring public awareness to, to um, breast cancer and breast cancer research. And um, I, I thought it was an excellent idea. Uh, departments from California to, to here are doing this pink patch project. Many of them are doing it. And um, we came up with our own design of what should be pink on the patch. And uh, I, I think it's, it's a pretty good looking patch. Mm. It, is for, it is available to the public for $10. Uh, $10 each, and the donation is going to um, an organization we, we chose. We chose the South Coast Breast Health Center, Good. and that uh, serves people in the South Coast towns, including Wareham, and uh, we thought that was a, uh, a worthy place to, um, to donate.
hopefully a lot of money that is uh, raised. And um, that's it. And you can purchase them at the police station. Okay, I was going to ask you. Or um, you can send in a self-addressed stamped envelope with a $10 check or cash uh, to the Wareham Police Department in care of the Pink Patch Project, and we'll send it out to you. So we hope uh, we hope we get a good response from this. It's a uh, it's certainly a, a worthy cause, and unfortunately, is is out there. Okay. So Thank you. The, um, the second thing I want to announce is that on, on Saturday, October 28th, we have our annual drug take back program in conjunction with the DEA and Covanta. Um, it'll be from 10 to 2 at the Wayham Police Station, and you can bring all unwanted prescription medications, no shops, no needles, and no uh, medical equipment, just the medication, and uh, across the country, a collection is made. It's uh, tons and tons of unwanted prescription medication that doesn't go into our ecosystem and into the or into the wrong hands on the streets. Okay. The other thing I was going to announce is that, as um, Judy touched on, it was the uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month is this month, and the DA's office has placed uh, donation boxes in um, various towns, Wareham being one of them. Unfortunately, domestic violence is a major issue in this town this area and um, they are collecting the toiletries they're collecting toiletries especially and any other small items that can be used by domestic violence um, organizations to hand out to to people in need uh, uh, that are victims of domestic violence yeah so uh, if you want to drop anything off while you're buying a pink patch <laughs> more than happy to see you at the police station great that, that is it. Well, great. Well, thank you very much for that update. Thank you Good deal. Thank you. Good stuff. Thanks. Thank you. Night. Okay. Next up, uh, presentation of certificate of appreciation. Well, I get to write lots of things. Um, Are you actually going to read it tonight? You said you were kind of a mush mouth, so I'm just no, waiting for you to butcher this. I am actually going to read it tonight. Um, and. In order to sort of set the stage, I want to read a little bit of T.S. Eliot's um, poem, The Naming of Cats, which was the inspiration for the musical Cats. The naming of cats is a difficult matter. It isn't just one of your holiday games. You may think, at first, I'm as mad as a hatter when I tell you a cat must have three different names. First of all, there's the name that the family used daily, such as Peter, Augustus, Alonzo, or James, such as Victor, or Jonathan, George, or Bill Bailey, all of them sensible, everyday names. There are fancier names if you think they sound sweeter, some for the gentlemen, some for the dames, such as Plato, Admetus, Electra, Demeter, but all of them sensible, everyday names. But I tell you, a cat, Needs a name, needs a name that's particular, and therefore, we have a certificate. <laughs> get it? Right, certificate right, right. of appreciation to Cat Jones. The describing of cat is a difficult matter, but we have tried for good or for badder. Esther Egg might give you a clue for the very long list of what the cat do. Halloween Hannah is much too forthright. We know that her presence won't give you a fright. Katie Kayaki might be a good name for the woman who leads us off in a game. Sandy Castle is too good a clue. You'll all guess what activity children will do. Tonawanda Tempest has visited town. We're glad she didn't take too many trees down. Lola Lovebug is snug as can be because we all enjoy concerts for free. <laughs> Chock full of fun is a terrible pun, but a name for dear cat and that sidewalk of fun. Diana Cat Crawl does give it her all for the onset blues, Festa Vol. <laughs> Siren Serena will sing for the boats. Priests bless them to make sure they all stay afloat. Lucy Illumi should be a good name for a wonderful woman who sang in a choir and has brought fireworks to an art much higher. Who knew she was game? 
In all sincerity and with thanks to your OBA team, the Board of Selectmen wishes to thank Kathleen M. Jones, a cat by any other name, is still to be congratulated for her outstanding service to the town of Wareham's summer festivities. <laughs> Took her two weeks to come up with all that. Huh? Will it take you two weeks to come up with that? No, it took me five minutes. Very clever. <laughs> she was probably thinking all night and everything about Anybody who'd like for me to write a booklet or something, you know, like advertising oh, something? Now, I, no. <laughs> yeah, now we know. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Okie doke. I'm going to vote on the acceptance of a donation for the Wareham Police Department. The police department has received a very generous donation of $1,500 from the Ashley Fay Amato Memorial Fund. Myrna Amato, Ashley's mother, has asked that we use these funds for transportation expenses. Our department incurs for the Plymouth County Drug and Alcohol Resistance Education Summer Program. This is an annual program our department participates in, which is 15 to 20 children from town who will be entering grades five and six who will attending camp for one week in the summer. The program instructs children in respect, responsibility, leadership, risk identification, decision making, and public safety awareness. We are very grateful to Murder Amato and the Ashley Fay Amato Memorial Fund for this donation. This is the second year we have received this donation. Move that we accept the very generous donation in memory of Ashley. Second. Okay, motion to accept the donation by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Scaziotti. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. Carries 4 0 0. Uh, just for the record, uh, Selectman Tropiano has left for the remainder of the meeting to go celebrate his daughter's 17th birthday. So that's a good excuse. Uh, next item uh, confirmatory vote to authorize 80,000 in EDIC funds for phase two comprehensive site assessment for Tremont Nail Factory. I'll move that we confirm the Second. discussion that we had last week. Yeah. Uh, motion to confirm our prior vote by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Clerk Slavin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 4 0 0. Uh, let's see, continue discussion and possible votes on town meeting warrant articles. I think we're all set. We're all set. But it's on there just in case anybody wanted to reconsider a prior vote. Uh, approve request for signs on town property by the onset Four Squares Church. I'd like to thank this group in particular because they actually had put a sign out and someone had done it ahead of time without the organization knowing and they actually moved it down because it was on the bridge, uh, which was nice for them to realize that there was an issue and they took care of it. So they basically have the trunk or treat event on Lopes Field in Onset and they want to put a sign up by the Toby Homestead in the front area there. Yep. Move to allow the placement starting today and ending the day after couple of days after the event, which is the 31st. 31st. Okay, motion by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Selectman Skaziaya. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. That's unanimous, 4 zero, zero. Uh, Let's see, that gets us through down to 48-hour uh, business. Selectman Skaziaya, do you have any? Selectman Whiteside, Clerk Slavin. 
I don't believe I do, Town Administrator Sullivan. Okay, uh, time for the Town Administrator's report. You have nothing. Okay, liaison initiative report, Selectman Scaziotti. Selectman Whiteside. Selectman Slavin. Oh. I'll, I'll do this very quickly. Uh, today was uh, basically a meeting in Ashland at the Warren Center for the Mass Municipal Association's Board of Directors uh, for policy making for the 2019 year. Uh, we had some good news actually besides. The benchmark is what the uh, governor uses for their budgets. And as everybody knows, we've been behind on the benchmark almost every month for the last year. Yes, dear. You can hear me now. And uh, for the month of September, the benchmark was exceeded by $125 million. So therefore, f for this particular year so far, we are above the benchmark, which means that there should not be any 9C cuts or any more cuts. The governor has been <coughs> making cuts and the Senate has been putting them back over the last few months. So hopefully this might be a good sign for us. We'll see how this works. Um, I'll give more information as to what the final decisions for MMA going forward. Uh, chapter 90 was one of the big items. Uh, the issue on the uh, new zoning bylaw changes coming in, with, <coughs> there's another issue with lose, basically the, the town's losing control of some of the zoning bylaws with something else that they would be supporting. Uh, it was an interesting piece coming up talking about uh, taking uh, basically land that's not taxed, you know, properties, whether it's a, a nonprofit or anybody at all and seeking to f for the towns to get revenue for those particular what they call tax exempt lands that should be a very interesting subject that's about all for today okay okay i don't have anything uh we have minutes yep make a motion that we accept the minutes of february 14th 2017. second a okay, motion to approve the minutes of February 14th, 2017 by Clerk Slavin, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, 4-0-0. Make a motion to accept the minutes of March 21st, 2017. Second. Okay, motion to approve the minutes by Clerk Slavin, seconded by uh, Selectman Scaziotti. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, unanimous, 4-0-0. Motion to accept the executive session minutes of September 26th, 2017 and hold. Second. Second. Okay, motion to uh, approve and hold by Clerk Slavin, seconded by Selectman Whiteside. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed abstain. It's unanimous. <coughs> uh, move to adjourn. Yep. Second. <laughs> Oh, wow, they're slow on the uptake tonight. Uh, motion to adjourn by Selectman Whiteside, seconded by Clerk Slavin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, staying 4 0 0. Thank Clark you. Good night, Wareham. Good night, Wareham.